Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was. Take hold of your iman. Don't give in to shaitan. Oh, you who believe, please give thanks to Allah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره إن شاء الله I am grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me tawfiq to visit again this community. And I hope that inshallah, every time I come here, I would see more progress and uh, more flourishment in the community under the guidance of my dear brother, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, Dr. Ali Dina, inshallah. Uh, as a you just heard there was an international conference in Qom about religions and ethics. And there were many international guests from different religious background. And I was asked to present a paper about peace in Islam. And interestingly, during my presentation, I mentioned Darus Salaam, because as you will see, there is a mention of this in the Quran. And I talked why Muslims call this place, you know, Darus Salaam. So now, Alhamdulillah, after just two weeks, uh, I have been given tawfiq to talk about it here in Darus Salaam. And inshallah, we all go to the real Darus Salaam, inshallah, and the Rabbihim, inshallah. Uh, as you know, today the issue of peace has become very significant. Even there are universities who offer either courses or even degrees in peace studies. Indeed, one of our brothers from home is now doing a second degree in the United States about peace studies. There are institutes who offer courses on peace. But sometimes peace is just understood as absence of war. So they peace and war. So if there is no war, there is peace. But the Quranic idea of peace is much more far-reaching. Peace is not just not fight. It's something much more as, inshallah, we will see. In the Quran, as you know, we use different terms. Sometimes we have sulh, which can be translated as peace. And sulh, interestingly, comes from the root salah. And Salah is opposite to Fasad. So Sol, which is peace coming from the root, which means order. If things are in order, everything is all right, this is Salah. If there is mischief, if there is corruption, if there is disorder, if there is disturbance, this is opposite to Sol. And this is why the Quran says, that the main principle is to have sulh, as sulh khair. If there are sometimes conflicts, it's not our choice. Our choice, our preference is as sulh, because it comes from salah. Another term which is used in the Quran is selm, and salm, and salam, which all come from the same root. And again, this means peace. So inshallah, what I'm going to share with you very quickly is some aspects of the Quranic understanding of peace. And you will see that peace is a very important concept in the Quran. And you will see that peace is not just a means. Peace is an end. Something that we have to struggle to achieve in this world and the hereafter. Something to achieve within and without. So this is the idea behind this paper. First of all, we find that in the Quran, 
peace is introduced as a way of greeting. Salam is a way of greeting. And this is not the way that we are supposed to greet each other. The Quran says the prophets used to greet by offering peace to each other. So it's not started in Islam. It goes back to the time of the prophets. For example, Prophet Ibrahim when he was visited by the angels, as I will mention later, he said salam to them. Prophet Isa is a very special case. Prophet Isa, when he was born, he said that peace be with me. He offered peace to himself. In chapter 19, Surah Maryam, verse 30, 31, 32, 33 is about the speech of Prophet Isa after his birth. And finally, he says, Wassalamu alayya yawma wulittu wa yawma amutu wa yawma ub'athu hayya. So he offers peace to himself because peace is a prayer. Peace is not just a formal salutation. Peace means that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to offer peace to you. So it means that I have no problem with you and I am ready even to ask Allah to give you peace. So Prophet Isa prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to offer peace to himself. The time which is very difficult time, the time of birth, the time of starting a new life is the time that we need peace. The time that I die and the time of resurrection, three critical situations in our life that we need peace. May Allah give this peace to all of us when we die and when we are resurrected. The Quran also says not only the prophets greeted by saying salam, also the angels offer salam. The people of heaven, inhabitants of heaven, Ahlul Jannah, also use salam to greet each other. Let me start with the people of heaven. In the chapter 10, Surah Yunus, verses 9 and 10, there are two beautiful verses about the people of heaven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ يَحْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ Sorry. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِحَمْدِكَ They say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, May you be glorified. This is their da'wah, means their call. Da'wah here doesn't mean fight. In Farsi, we say da'wah sometimes means when we are fighting. But da'wah means their call, their conversation, their speech. Da'wahum fiha subhanaka Allahumma wa tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. When people of heaven want to greet each other, they say salam. Wa akhiru da'wahum and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And when they want to finish their conversation, when they want to finish their speech, they finish with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the arguments that I use to prove that hamd falls under tasbih. Because Allah first says, da'wahum fiha subhanak allahumma. Then he says, the end of their da'wah is hamd. End of something is part of it. Yeah, if you have something, End of it is part of it. So when end of it is hamd, it means that hamd comes under tasbih. So this is one verse. Another verse is verse 23 of chapter 14. آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْدَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالَدِينَ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ تَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سلام. So they offer peace to each other. Then about the angels. The Quran goes into details about the angels. One occasion that angels offer salam is at the time of death. When the angels receive the souls, the spirits of people, 
they treat them in different ways, depending on what they have done in dunya. There are people that alladina tatabafahum al malaika zalimi anfusahim, they have bad situation. But there are people that the angels receive their souls while they are in the state of purity and piety. Allah says that الَّذِينَ تَتَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ طَيِّبِينَ يَقُولُونَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ أُدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ When the angels give them this peace, that person would really feel peace. Because this is the dua of the angels, and the dua of angels is not going to be rejected. So, at that time that you are very worried what is going to happen to me when you see that the angels smile at you and say salamun alaykum then you will have really tranquility and peace and they say enter heaven of course this can be referring to the enter in barzakh because we believe that very good mu'mineen right at the time of dying they go to heaven of barzakh al Gabroema Jannatun or Hufratun can be Jannah, it can be garden, it can be Hufra. Of course, there are people in between who would be in the state of sleeping. But very good mu'manin, right? They go to heaven of Barzakh, which is not the eternal one. So this is at the time of receiving the soul. Then at the time of entrance to heaven, again the angels come. And they offer this peace. One of the beautiful ideas of the Quran is that people don't go to heaven as individuals. This is very important. Initially, we are resurrected as individuals. But when every person comes, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now you must stand behind your leaders. And then they go to heaven or hell in groups as communities. Our destiny is not only interrelated in dunya, in akhira also is related. So, the same is in mentioned in the Quran. When these people go to heaven and they are led towards heaven, when they reach heaven and the gates are open for them, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ The angels who are guardians of heaven say, Peace be with you. Please come in and you can remain here forever. Because, you know, even if you are in heaven but you are not sure about how much you can stay there, you have always worry. Maybe tomorrow they ask me to go out. Like, you know, if you are in a good house, but anytime the landlord may say, you know, please go out. You have always worry. So when they enter, Allah gives them right away the guarantee that they can remain there forever. Salamun alaykum tiptum fadukhuluha khaladeen. So at the time of death, at the time of entrance to heaven, also inside heaven. Even inside heaven. Jannatu adnan yadkhulunaha wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim wa dhurriyatihim wal malaikatu yadkhuluna alayhim min kulli bab. From all the gates they come to them, salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Because of your patience and persistence in dunya, may peace be with you. So this is inside heaven. And then also in dunya, when they 
visited Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In dunya, they also said the same thing. وَنَبِّئْهُمْ عَنْ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا سَلَامًا This is chapter 15 verses 51 to 53. And elsewhere Allah says, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُولُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ And ulama have explained that there is a difference between سَلَامٌ and سَلَامًا سَلَامٌ is more powerful. Because Islamically, when you are greeted, you have to reply either in the same way or in a better way. Prophet Ibrahim greeted them better than they greeted him. Then Allah himself says salam. It's amazing. Allah says salam. For example, about... Prophet Yahya. Allah says, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وُلِدَهِ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّةِ Peace be with him. When he was born, I was reflecting, you know, about this. What does it mean that Allah, after centuries, is sending peace to Yahya when he was born. Do you get the point? I can say peace be with you now, or peace be with you, for example, when you are going to die. Or Prophet Isa, when he was born, he said, peace be with me the day that I was born. That's okay. But Allah, after centuries, is said, peace be with Yahya when he was born. What does it mean? My understanding is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he stands outside time, so he can offer peace to Yahya outside time. But he explains to us in time. This, this is a philosophical discussion. We don't need to go into this. Allah offers peace to Nuh. Salamun ala Nuhan fil alameen. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Salamun ala Musa wa Harun. And in general, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ So Allah is offering peace to the prophets. But also in heaven, سَلَامٌ قَوْلًا مِنْ رَبٍ رَحِيمٌ Inshallah, when you go to heaven, and you will have all the blessings of heaven, you would have very special experience. Perhaps nothing is like this. And that is when Allah himself says salamun to you. And you would hear qawlan min rabbin rahim. This salam would not leave a slightest worry, a slightest concern in human beings. Then Allah says, he has also instructed prophets to use salam and instructed believers to use salam for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he told musa and harun alayhim salam you should go to pharaoh and you know allah told them you should speak softly and even he didn't stop that he said what they should actually say fa'atiyahu fa'ula inna rasula rabbik Tell Pharaoh, we are sent by your Lord. We are two messengers of your Lord. Bani Israel. Let us take Bani Israel with us. Don't torture them. Don't punish them. We have brought you a sign, a communication from your Lord. You know, it's a very nice way of talking. Ayatin min rabbik. It's a sign from your Lord. Peace be with the one who follows the guidance. We don't want to fight you. We don't have any conflict. We have this request. If you accept it, peace can be for you. Also, Allah says to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, This ayah needs by itself one session. 
It's very beautiful ayah and shows great rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and great love for mu'mineen. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ When the believers come to you, Allah says, say salam to them. How much Allah loves mu'mineen? He says to the Prophet, say salam to them. In a sense, it means that say my salam to them. You know, the Prophet was always the first person to say salam. No one was able to precede the Prophet in offering salam. Once a young man wanted to surprise the Prophet. He went behind a wall and tried to hide himself. And the plan was that when the Prophet comes, he jumps out and says salam to surprise the Prophet. But when he did so, he was not able to speak. So the Prophet said, Salamun alaykum, and then he had sukun, so he could reply. It is only the Prophet who can really offer salam. We can say, reply to him. We cannot offer peace to the Prophet. A person who is lower in rank cannot give peace to a person who is higher in rank. Then Allah says, Kataba rabbukum ala nafsihir rahmah. Your Lord has written down, has made it necessary for himself to be merciful. Then Allah says also to Mu'mineen, when you enter house of your brothers or sisters in faith, your family members, say salam. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nasu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. You should get permission and you should say salam. Okay. Another thing that we find in the Quran which is very important for peace studies is that not only peace and greeting of peace is offered to good people even when you are troubled if you are offended by ignorant people also you should offer peace to them you don't want to start fight with anyone allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ibadur rahman الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما. They say peace be with you. I don't have time to waste. I want to continue my own journey. Or Allah سبحانه وتعالى says about مشركين ولا إن سألتهم من خلقهم لا يقولون الله. If you ask them who has created you, they wouldn't say. These idols, they know that Allah has created them. But why they are taken away from the truth? Then Allah says, These are the people who never believe. Leave them. Say salam to them and then say, Allah himself will inform you about what you have done. So a mu'min not only is, after, is not after conflict, is not after war, he tries to avoid as much as possible any conflict, any tension. This is one chapter. Another chapter is about some blessed times which Quran says this is the time of peace. You know that in the whole year, we have one night which is the most important night for us, which is better than 1,000 months without this night. That is Laylatul Qadr. That is Laylatul Mubarakah. That is the Layla in which the Quran was revealed. All the affairs come down. What is the name that Allah gives to that night Laylatul Qadr and also the night of peace Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr it shows that peace is a very important quality also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the most blessed place he says it is Darus Salam, heaven, which is the most important place, 
Allah says, this is Darus Salam, abode of peace. وَهَذَا صِرَاتُ رَبِّكَ مُسْتَقِيمًا قَدْ فَسَّلْنَا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَذَّكَّرُونَ لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ They would have the abode of peace next to their Lord and Allah is their guardian because of the things that they have been doing. And Mecca which is the holiest place again that's a place that Allah has legislated to be placed for peace and security then the Quran says peace is also a name for Allah he is salam Allah is peace and he is mu'min, he offers sukun, he offers security, he offers peace. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to achieve peace and take this peace with you to meet your Lord. In dunya, what is the sign of perfection? What is the sign of happiness in life? Even secular psychologists have discussed this issue. What are the things that make someone's life very special? One is hope. If someone has no hope, he has no happy life. It's miserable life. If someone has no confidence, he has miserable life. If someone doesn't have tranquility, doesn't have serenity, doesn't have sukun, is all the time with stress, his life is miserable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al it is only with the remembrance of Allah that you can achieve this inner peace. And then Allah says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah. Oh, the soul that has achieved this peace, you are qualified to be addressed, Erj'i ila rabbik. If you don't achieve this sukun in dunya, then you cannot achieve it, you know, by chance or accident. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji ila rabbik. Maybe you go to heaven, but not to the heaven which belongs to Allah. Irji ila rabbik radiyatan mardiyah. Fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. Our ulama say jannati. My heaven is a special rank in heaven. It's the highest rank of heaven. If we achieve that sukun, then we can return to Allah radiyatan mardiyya. I was thinking about this. Why Allah says radiyatan mardiyya? It seems that without achieving this, you would not be pleased and Allah would not be pleased with you. You have failed. This dunya is a university, is a school. Is a training place. What we have to achieve is sukun, is confidence, is tranquility. If we achieve it, we can go back to Allah radiyatan mardiya. Without this, neither we would be pleased nor Allah would be pleased with us. It means that there has no been, not been success completely. And it is important that it has to be radiyatan mardiya. Because there are people who are very pleased with themselves. This is not enough. You have to be pleasing to Allah as well. And Allah has to be pleased with you. Now, how can we achieve this inner peace, this external peace, peace in dunya, peace in akhirah? What is the way? What is the plan? Interestingly, Quran is the answer. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yahdi bihillahu man ittaba' ridwanahu subul as-salam. Whoever follows the Quran, seeking Allah's pleasure, Allah will guide him through the Quran to the ways of peace. Subul as-salam. The Quran is book for achieving peace. Subul as-salam. What is the difference between Subul and Sirat? We have Sirat al-Mustaqim, but we have Subul as-Salam. In, interestingly, in the same ayah, we have also Sirat al-Mustaqim later. My understanding is this. Subul refers to different aspects of Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Mustaqim is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam Allah ta'abudu shaytan innahu lakum aduvun mubin wa ana i'buduni hadha siratun mustaqim. Okay. Obedience to Allah. But there are different ways to obey Allah depending on your condition. How to obey Allah as a child? How to obey Allah as a teenager? As an adult? As a husband, as a wife, as a parent, as a teacher, as a student, as a businessman, as a neighbor, as a doctor. All is Sirat Mustaqim, but there are different avenues for Sirat Mustaqim depending on your, your responsibilities. And the Quran says, I offer you the ways of achieving peace in every corner of your life. As a child, I show you how to have peace. As a teenager, I show you how to have peace. As an adult, I show you how to have peace. If you are married or not married, if you have children or not children, if you are rich or poor, if you follow the Quran, you would always be able to have this sukoon. If you don't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you don't follow the Quran, if you want to try different ways, then the chance is that you will always have a stress, you would have a miserable life, as Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ذَنْكَ Those who turn away from my remembrance, and Quran is the book of remembrance, they would have miserable life. And on the day of judgment, they will be blind. So, you see that peace in the Quran is a very fundamental concept. It is by itself a sign of success. Is it by itself an ideal? Is an end? And if you understand this, then it would be easy to understand that all those cases in the Quran that there is a mention of war, it's always as the last resort. It's always defensive. You are going your way, someone comes and attacks you, say, Salamu Alaikum, please you know, let me go. He doesn't let you, he wants to kill you. Then at the end you have to defend yourself. You are not a person who is after tension, after disturbance. But there are people. Rasulullah was rahmatun lil alameen. But people tortured his followers, killed his followers. He didn't do anything. Even in Medina, they used to create lots of troubles for them. They didn't do anything. At the end, finally, Allah says, وَأُذْنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُغَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُ Allah said, now you have permission to defend yourself. Even they were not defending themselves. Those who read the Quran in a way that think that Quran is a book of always calling for war and killing, this is misunderstanding, whether it is done by Muslims or non-Muslims. There are Muslims who misunderstand the Quran and there are non-Muslims who misunderstand the Quran. But we say that the Quran is the book that يَحْدِي بِهِ اللَّهُ مَنْ اتَّبَعَ رِضْوَانَهُ سُبُلَ السَّلَامِ We say that Allah is salam. 
and Allah wants salam for us in dunya and akhirah. This is only some dimensions of the concept of peace in the Quran and there are much more but I think it's enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to achieve this inner peace inshallah inside us. May Allah enable us to have universal peace in the world. We want to have a day that all human beings can start their day without fear and end their day without fear inshallah. May Allah honor us by hastening the reappearance of Imam Zaman at Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. May Allah honor us by being the generation who prepare for the advent of Imam at Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif so that humanity can see that how peacefully they can live under the guidance of the Hujjah of Allah, inshallah. May Allah give shafa to all the brothers and sisters who are ill. May Allah forgive all the marhumin, marhumin of this community. Those who have rights upon us are marajah who have passed away. May Allah let them be with Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. May Allah give long life to our ulama and marajah, our parents. And may Allah make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.